try to initiate release sequencer. On my mark. Five. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Sunday, March 22nd, and you are listening to episode 253 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for planetside news and information. As always, I'm brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab on instantactionpodcast.com. So how is everyone doing in isolation or suspended animation i don't know what, whatever you guys are all in uh, i'm working from home i was working from home this past week my company has completely gone to do not come into the office work from home until further notice uh my daughter's college made the decision as well that they aren't having classes now for the rest of the semester so she will be home until further notice my wife's office is a little more wonky she's like half the week in the office half the week at home so I, I wish she was practicing social distancing a little more and helping to flatten the curve. I wish her office would go to 100% work from home because she can. Uh, I don't know why they're being so stubborn as to not. But otherwise, everyone in my family is currently healthy. Uh, I think my mother is actually going a little stir crazy right now being stuck at home. Uh, my parents live in an over 55 community and they're on 100% lockdown right now. They're They've been asked not to leave the premises at all because obviously being part of the older generation, they're a little more susceptible to coronavirus if it does hit them. Uh, so hopefully, hoping that they just kind of stand pat, even though my mother is definitely getting stir crazy. <laughs> you should have heard the call we had last night. She sounded depressed as all hell and just wants to get the heck out of the house and can't. Uh, but again, other, other than that, my family is doing fine, and I hope all my listeners, you guys are doing good as well. I wouldn't wish this coronavirus on any of you, uh, and uh, hopefully we don't have to stay in isolation that much longer. But I guess the, the flip side of that is, everybody listen to this, I know you guys are gamers just like I am. This is like the best time to be a gamer, I guess. There's There's no stigma whatsoever for staying in your computer room for the entire week and playing any game that you want. Uh, I think people are trying new games. I see a lot of people getting stuff on Steam, a lot of new games people are installing, uh, people revisiting old games that they haven't played before. Obviously, Planet Side 2 has a huge resurgence in players right now. Uh, on the recent Twitch stream, I think Rel said that they might have had over 13,000 people playing the game at once. And I mean, those are huge numbers that they haven't you know, even sniffed at in forever. So I, I think this coronavirus thing has kind of bloomed for Rogue Planet games at the right time to get a lot of people in and playing. Um, but you know, eventually it'll come to an end and we'll be able to go back outside again and do other stuff and actually interact with people outside of online. But again, it's a great time to be a gamer because there's really no stigma attached to us sitting at home and playing games, games nonstop. I've been playing the shit out of Planet Side 2, as I'm sure all of you guys were. And I've been playing the shit out of Planet Side 2, even though the Emerald server is hot garbage right now. Uh, that update that the hardware update can't come soon enough for emerald as far as i'm concerned but enough about me just know that i am fine i am well and uh, everyone in my family is well also and i hope yours all remain well as well what's in store for this week's show well first i know i just spent a lot of talk about the state of me but i want to talk about the current state of rogue planet games in the face of the coronavirus situation and what it means for ongoing development after that there was a small hot fix that dropped on live on march 17th that i want to go over it's really small uh and then 
I'm going to move on to the PTS, but because there was a pretty decent sized PTS update from the 20th with a lot of desolation changes that we need to talk about. And then I'm going to finish up this week talking about the resurgence bundles that are available in the depot that I completely forgot to talk about last week. Seriously, if you're a new player, the value for versus cost of these bundles is astronomical and really worth taking a look. So strap in as we hot drop into another episode of the Instant Action Podcast. So first up this week is a post that uh, Andy put out this past week regarding the changes in the day-to-day development process at Rogue Planet Games. And I just wanted to take a few moments and talk about what this means over at the studio based on what he wrote. And he wrote the following. He wrote, Hello, everyone. In light of the constantly expanding efforts and restrictions throughout the world to deal with the COVID-19 situation, beginning tomorrow, Tuesday the 17th, the Rogue Planet Games dev team will begin working from home. While this will result in a pretty significant adjustment in our day-to-day development process, we are taking steps to ensure that our ability to support Planetside 2 is not disrupted in any measurable way over the coming weeks. We will be hot-fixing live issues as needed, as well as continuing to work on upcoming feature-slash-content releases. So lots of team voice chat, and hopefully not a lot of accidentally leaving webcams on. Tomorrow, Tuesday, we have scheduled a full client-server update with several bug fixes, which I'll talk about next. Uh, Unfortunately, the Emerald hardware upgrade that we had planned for Wednesday the 18th has been delayed. It still might happen later this week. It didn't. Uh, But I'm waiting on a confirmation from the Daybreak Daybreak Tech Ops team tomorrow, and we'll share the details as soon as I have them. Thank you in advance for understanding. Rogue Planet is a relatively small team of developers, so we're confident that we can maintain the resurgence that the Escalation update has provided PlanetSite 2. We plan to keep up the communication as we've done over the past several weeks, but please bear with us while we iron out any wrinkles that might surface with this transition. So you you heard me kind of interject some things in. Uh, again, I'm going to talk about the hotfix next. Uh, and we do know at this point, as of this recording on the 22nd, that the Emerald hardware upgrade did not happen, which kind of sucks because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Emerald is hot garbage right now. Uh, we were playing last Sunday night and um, during Ops. And actually, Tuesday, we were playing Ops. And at one point, uh, ha- at least half of us just got disconnected from the game for absolutely no reason whatsoever. You know, I, and for me personally, I was getting connection poor for the majority of the night. I can't tell you the last time I've seen a connection poor notification on my screen. I mean, that just doesn't show up for me being an East Coast player on an East Coast server. So uh, I completely understand that Emerald is going through its issues right now and really needs that hardware upgrade as soon as humanly possible. Everything that I'm hearing says that it may happen this week, but I'm really not getting my hopes up for it, which is too bad. Uh, So just note that if you're playing on Emerald, there are going to be some pains when you're playing there based on the server hardware not being updated yet. Uh, I mean, it's a good, it's a perfectly accessible time to go check out some other servers if you really want to. You can go play on Connery. There's tons of people playing on Connery. Heck, you can go play overseas if you really want to if you're a U.S. player uh, on Emerald. You still have choices. And, of course, you can still play on Emerald. I mean, even though I was getting connection poor for the majority of the night, I was still able to find fights. I was still able to kill other people. Other people were still able to kill me. Uh, and it, it's been going okay. They They did some sort of resetting of stuff later on in the week and things have gotten a little bit better on emerald but i could i could start to see a little bit of degradation when i was playing yesterday on saturday as well so again these are just things that we're going to have to deal with in light of the coronavirus as it stands right now uh as i just read in andy's notes everybody over at uh, rogue planet games is working from home as they should be because don't forget They're in California, and California is in a state of lockdown right now where they're asking people not to leave their homes, which fully means that that's another reason why I think 
the Daybreak Tech Ops team will most likely not update the Emerald hardware because if they're based in California as well, they're being told to stay home. I highly doubt they're going to be flying out to where the Emerald server is located just to do hardware upgrades. But hey, I could be wrong and you know maybe we'll see something like that happen. I, I keep hearing the 25th, but again, I'm not getting my hopes up for that to actually happen. But again, I think it's more important and us as gamers have to accept this as well. It is much more important for these guys to stay at home, not catch this virus, not spread this virus if they have this virus. Uh, I mean, that's just the, the proper etiquette that we should all be experiencing and having uh, with it, with this pandemic as it states right now. So good on Andy for getting the news out there. And I, for one, will certainly understand if things come at a little slower pace. Uh, but if anything you know, points to the next two topics I'm going to talk about, them working at home really has not affected them too much in getting information out to us. So with that, let's move on to that hot fix. So as I said at the beginning of the show, the March 17th hotfix was pretty small. There's not a heck of a lot in it. And that's why it's a hotfix and not a game update. So the patch notes for this one included where they fixed an issue where the craft button could become unavailable because resource counts weren't displaying in the UI correctly. And they do note that there still may be an issue where some outfits are prevented from crafting altogether despite having full resources. Uh, This update does include additional debug information that will help them track down the root cause for any outfits that are still having the issue with the craft button. They also fixed an issue that could cause some players to be unable to edit outfit ranks. They weren't able to fully reproduce the issue internally. However, they did identify a code issue related to the system, which is now resolved, and they're hoping that that's what's going to fix this. Also, NSO outfits, which kind of got left out in the cold, now do receive Araxium for participating in base captures, and that was intended from the beginning, uh, just omitted, so NSO outfits don't need to complain anymore. They fixed missing sorting options in the depot. They fixed the Meltdown Alert ISO and CERT rewards that weren't being delivered correctly to all factions, so Vanu can stop complaining that they weren't receiving ISO inserts from the Meltdown. They fixed the command voice chat channel, so it's now continent-specific only. Uh, I'm glad that they mentioned this one because at one point I became squad lead and was getting command voice chat from Amrish, even though I was fighting on Indar and just assumed that it was something on my end. It's good to know that it was a bug overall and that they've corrected that. It was it was freaking annoying, I have to say. They also edited the key binding menu so it now correctly refers to command voice chat, chat instead of squad leader voice chat. And finally, they fixed a typo in the polystellarite tooltip. Again, that's it that came in this hot fix. There are a couple, obviously, the craft bug is probably the biggest thing. Uh, and I'm glad that they feel that they have completely fixed it because I know uh, I heard quite a few people complaining about not being able to craft things uh, even though they know they had the proper resource count. So I'm glad that that was fixed in this hot fix as well. And I would imagine we'll probably see another hot fix this week as well with some other little bugs as they get tracked down, even though uh, everybody at Rogue Planet Games is at home. So with that, let's move over to the PTS and talk about the changes that are ma- were made over there last week. So note that this PTS update dropped on March 20th. So this came to us on Friday. Uh, The first part of this was an Outfit Wars schedule on PTS. uh, And all of that stuff is actually going on right now as I'm recording this show. So it really doesn't make too much sense to talk about it. uh, But just know that they were doing uh, an Outfit War on the 21st and 22nd. Uh, One was starting at 8 a.m., the other was starting at 3 p.m., both Pacific time, so that way that both U.S. players and uh, EU players 
could participate in these and provide some testing feedback to them. Again, by the time the majority of you listen to this show on Monday, uh, that PTS Outfit Wars schedule will have ended. So again, there's not too much reason to talk about it. But there are some other changes that got added to the PTS uh, regarding Outfit Wars that are important to talk about. Uh, And the majority of those are regarding desolation and construction costs on desolation. So starting with the terrain, base flow, and visuals, they all receive significant updates, uh, but do consider them still a work in progress. So if you've only played Outfit Wars on Desolation, you know, maybe a month ago, uh, it might be worth popping on to Desolation to see some of these changes. They also made some major revisions to the terrain, which included some additional cover in some of the open fields on Desolation. They also added a unique new capture point building, which surrounds each capture point on Desolation right now. They changed the combat flow near and within each capture point so that it has received some major revisions. Uh, Each of Desolation's obelisks have received a new model and new effects. They also now glow faction colors when captured, which I think is a great change. Uh, So that means you don't necessarily need to even be looking at the map to know which uh, faction has captured an obelisk. Again, I think that's a great change. Also now at the end of the Outfit Wars, the skybox changes, the continent locks, and then rewards are automatically given out. The Victorious Outfit in an Outfit War now receives a free Bastion Fleet Carrier. Uh, It's mostly a placeholder that could be changed later. Also, the Warpgate regions now properly prohibit enemy players from entering them. The Warpgate bases also now have a Desolation Cordium Silo, which is stocked at the start of the match with 75,000 Cordium. Obviously, you can add more to it. Uh, Also, cordium held within the silos silos will not decay over time while on desolation. Desolation cordium silos will also recharge nearby construction objects and terminals. Uh, Air pads now have a new icon on the map itself, so you can see them again. They also fixed the fake uncapturable capture point marker that could appear beneath the ground at the center of the map. They added some new ambient audio to Desolation. They fixed some LOD ranges on Desolation command centers. And the 2D map for Desolation has received some new visuals. So as you can see, they've been working a lot behind the scenes on Desolation itself to kind of make it a better better place to fight over. Uh, I'm really happy with the glowing faction color one. I think that's really important. Granted, it doesn't necessarily help colorblind players, so that might be the only negative to it. Uh, but for everybody else, I think that that's a good change. Uh, I'm really curious to see all all the uh, revisions to the train, especially cover in the open fields. Uh, I can definitely tell you that some of those early testings that I was a member of, some of that open field, if you got blown up out of your tank, you were basically a sitting duck. Uh, in a lot of engagements, so I'm glad to see some additional cover, uh, as well as a lot of the other changes. Now, also, like I said, uh, in line with those changes, construction costs have been rebalanced to apply both to desolation terminals and construction terminals. Uh, those new costs are as follows. So the flash was reduced to 50 cordium, the javelin to 100 cordium, harasser, ant, sunderer, those didn't change. The lightnings were reduced to 300. Main battle tanks, which weren't able to be pulled before, are now 500. ESFs were reduced to 400. Valkyries were reduced to 300. Uh, Liberators, which you couldn't get before, are now 500. And Galaxies, which you couldn't get before, are now 750. So again, those are new cordium costs to vehicles on both Desolation and regular construction terminals. Now, they also rolled out some changes to the Bastion, so the deployment terminal now has its own unique visual. Uh, They fixed an issue where Bastions could be instantly destroyed by physics collisions, and I think that's 100% to fix the issue where a drop pod killed a Bastion in one uh, in one scenario, which really sucks. Uh, also, drop pods should no longer get stuck inside Bastion Collision, which is probably what caused the 
bastion to blow up and to begin with and they'd also fix some visible texture seams on top of the bastion turrets themselves now on top of that there were some other miscellaneous changes fixes and additions the first is that they fixed an issue that would prevent join combat from functioning and i do want to point out that i think it's still hilarious that in these notes on their official forums they called it instant action uh, so even though every effort that they've made to rename it Join Combat, uh, it's still instant action in everybody's minds. Uh, I am still patiently waiting for the day when they just throw up their hands in disgust and say, fuck it, let's just call it instant action again. So that will make me happy. Uh, I think it will make most players happy since, like I said, everybody still calls it instant action. Uh, but I'm glad that they fixed that issue because uh, it was very annoying when you were coming across that. Uh, and couldn't use instant action for any reason. Uh, they also fixed some additional instances where critical chains implant effects, effects could last indefinitely. Uh, I'm glad that they didn't give up on that bug because it's an annoying one. Also, players will no longer be knocked back from max abilities in Sanctuary, which is too bad because I found that one amusing. Uh, the NSO Empire emblem on the HUD now updates properly when switching continents. Uh, render distance settings now save properly for all languages. The character select screen now displays the correct number of characters on the account. They added some uh, visual effects to the observer drone in Sanctuary. They salv the salvage platinum compound helmet now displays the smoke effects correctly on female characters. And finally, Sanctuary received an improved two-dimensional map. So there's everything new that came to PTS. Again, I think some of those desolation changes are good. The cordium cost changes are interesting, uh, a lot of them much lower. Uh, and then a good, good on some of those other miscellaneous changes, fixes, and additions as well. Um, again, if you're curious about all these changes, PC only. Again, PS4 doesn't have access to the PTS all this stuff is on the PTS right now, and I would imagine a lot of this comes to live as soon as possible. Um, I, I know that the first Outfit Wars, which is affectionately titled Alpha One, uh, is going to be beginning this week with the first phase of actually getting in and collecting resources, which means... The first Outfit Wars is not that far around the corner, which means I would expect everything that's out there on the PTS right now to come to us within the next week or so before the first Outfit Wars actually kicks off on Desolation itself. So I would imagine a lot of this stuff is going to be hitting live sooner rather than later. Uh, but with that, let's move on to our last topic this week. And the last topic is just something that I forgot to mention on last week's show. Obviously, I talked about the the giant escalation patch last week, but one thing that they snuck in with this patch was some monetization, which I don't have a problem with it because they really haven't thrown this in anybody's face, uh, that there is some monetization along with the escalation update, but... I think that they should do a little more advertising on these bundles because along with the Escalation update, they added some Resurgence bundles to the game. And I've been talking about these Resurgent bundles for the past week, and it amazes me to no end that there are still people that have no idea that these are in the game. Uh, and that they're like, well, what do you mean there's Resurgent? There's a new bundle. They don't even know that they're out there. Uh as with the uh, anniversary bundles, they've done the resurgent bundles in three tiers, a soldier tier, a captain tier, and a warlord tier. And I want to take a moment and just talk about each of these bundles because if you're a new player, these are an excellent way uh, and a pretty inexpensive way, uh, I, if I must say, to get yourself some good stuff in game uh, and may maybe make you feel less intimidated by some of the weapons that veteran players are throwing at you nonstop. Not saying that the weapons in these bundles are better than existing weapons, and in many cases they're not better than existing weapons, but A, it'll help you complete directives, and B, some of them look fucking amazing, because uh, a lot of these are Doku's weapons, and... Uh, Again, it's just a way for you to flesh out your arsenal if you feel lacking as a newer player. So 
The first bundle is the Soldier's Resurgence bundle. Uh, it is available for 999 Daybreak Cash. That's 10 bucks. Uh, in it, you unlock a seven-day merit boost. Uh, and note that this is a merit boost. This is not an experience boost. Uh, the merit boost um, increases XP and merit gained by 50% over their duration. Uh, obviously, merit is one of the new currency types that can be earned by completing meritorious actions with your outfit, uh, base captures, controls, things like that, and can be spent at the outfit vendors in Sanctuary. All merit boosts, rug boosts, and implant packs are only available for the character you use to purchase the bundle on, so choose wisely. So again, these merit boosts are a little bit better than the heroic XP boost because they include both a merit gain and an XP gain. So again, the soldier's bundle includes a seven day one. It includes one basic implant pack. It includes the fac a faction decal pack. It includes the death from above decal. It includes a javelin decal. And it also unlocks the faction submachine guns. These are the gladius, the jackal and the canis again for only 10 bucks. The Gladius and the Jackal and the Canis are more than that alone. Well, let me rephrase that. Each gun is 699 Daybreak Cash. So, I mean, right now, if you're unlocking all three of those guns, that alone is worth more than the whole value of the Resurgence bundle itself. Uh, and the Merit Boosts are freaking amazing. Too bad this one's a seven-day, but, I mean, if you're strapped for cash and only have 10 bucks to spend on something... Uh, it's definitely better than nothing. And the faction SMGs are not bad. They're not bad at all. Um, I mean, especially the Canis on VS. I mean, it's been nerfed over the to over time, but uh, it's still one of my favorite submachine guns. Moving on, though, the next one is the Captain's Resurgence Bundle. This is 2,499 Daybreak Cash, so 25 bucks. Uh, you also get a Merit Boost in this one. This one lasts for one month. You also get three basic implant packs instead of one. You still get the faction decal back, the death from above decal, the javelin decal. You get all three of the faction SMGs. You also unlock the NS61 Emissary. Uh, for those that forget, that is the fully auto pistol, and you unlock that on not only VSNCTR, but also on your NSO characters if you have any. Uh, but in addition to that, you also unlock the faction scout rifles. These are the Bishop, the Dragoon, and the Obelisk. And you also get the faction assault rifles. So you get the Vanquisher, the Arbalist, and L the Lacerda as well. And faction loyalty banners for NCTR and VS, which are not bad looking banners, if I do have to say so. I activated the VS one on my character just the other day. Uh, so, I mean, right now we're talking this one's 25 bucks. Uh, again, the Gladius, Jackal, and Canis are six ninety nine each. The emissary is seven ninety nine. The Bishop, Dragoon, and Obelisk are six ninety nine each. Uh, and finally, the Vanquisher, Arbalist, and Lacerda are six ninety nine each. So, I mean, right there, you're getting three, six, nine weapons at six ninety nine, and then you throw in the emissary as well. I mean, that's 7,000 Daybreak Cash just to unlock those normally through play. Yes, I understand that they're across different factions, but I mean, even if you just play one faction on your character and you unlock, uh, let's just say uh, VS for an example, and you unlock the Canis, the Obelisk, the Lacerda, and the Emissary, that's over 2,800 Daybreak Cash. So just those three guns alone pay for the entire Resurgence bundle uh, in savings. And then you add on top of that a Merit Boost, an implant pack with three, you know, plus a bunch of different decals. Uh, definitely worth it if you're in the, you know, looking for uh, something cool with a bunch of cool weapons in the bundle itself. And then we get to the highest one. That's the Warlord's Resurgence bundle. Uh, this is 4,999 Daybreak Cash. So this is 50 bucks. Granted, we're stepping up a little bit more, but you get a heroic merit boost for six months. You get 18 basic implant packs. You still get the decal pack, the death from, death from above, the javelin decal, the faction SMGs, the emissary, 
uh, the faction scout rifles, the faction assault rifles. You get the faction loyalty banners, you know, everything that you got in the previous two bundles. But you also unlock the conduit camo for NCTR and VS. You unlock all the Empire's carbines, the, you know, the Charger, the Kindred, and the Horizon. You will also unlock the faction LMGs, so the Promise, the Watchman, and the Maw. You also unlock the Thumper. Uh, you get the loyalty banner. You get a decal pack. Both of those are for NS. You also get the death from above decal for NS. Uh, you also get the javelin decal in NS colors. And finally, you get the NS candu- uh, conduit camo for NSO, VS, NC, and TR. So again, for 50 bucks, and this is by far the best bundle, in my opinion, that you can get. I mean, just getting that heroic boost alone... Uh, for six months is worth the $50. Getting double XP and double merit for six months, in my opinion, is worth the $50. Uh, but adding in all those various weapons, so I mean we're talking 3, 6, 9, 12, um, 15, and then the Thumper is 16, the Emissary is 17. You're getting 17 guns for 50 bucks. And those 17 guns, well, let's see, 15 of them at $699, plus the emissary at $799, the thumper $699. Uh, I mean, that's almost uh, 12000 uh daybreak cash. So for $120 worth of stuff for 50 bucks, uh, that's like I said at the beginning of the show. If you're a brand new player and you're looking to unlock a ton of different weapons that you can use in game and really flesh out your arsenal across all three factions, getting this Warlord's Resurgent bundle is a complete no-brainer. Um, I got it. I have un- I unlocked a lot of these th- guns ver- across various characters for one reason or another. So I paid for a bunch of these guns already, but being able to unlock everything like I did at that $50 level, like I said, a complete and absolute no-brainer. Uh, and I highly, highly recommend this if you're a new player, checking these things out. Uh, and not only that, but you'll help support the devs. So in addition to getting the Resurgence bundle, grab a membership while you're at it too. And then not only can you have a heroic boost for six months, but you can have double XP weekends, plus the 500 daybreak cash that you get on a monthly basis and priority access on getting on top of continents as well. So uh, now is definitely the time to support these devs if you like it, and the Warlords Resurgence bundle is absolutely amazing, uh, if I do have to say so. Uh, But with that, I think that's enough talking about spending money, uh, especially these days. Let's move on to housekeeping. Housekeeping! Housekeeping! Come back later, please. Housekeeping? Not now. Housekeeping? Go away. I coming anyway? So no emails this week. That's fine. Everybody's playing the game. I completely get it. So that's going to be it for this week's show. As always, how can you get in touch with me or the show itself? Your first stop should always be my website, which is www.instantactionpodcast.com. You can also email me at instantactionshow at gmail.com. I will read your email on the show and respond to it. Uh, You can also follow the show on Twitter at instactpodcast. But in closing, if you've enjoyed the show, please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, google play or anywhere else also feel free to tell your friends and outfit mates about the show but finally thanks for listening and keep spamming that join combat formerly known as instant action button derringer out
is insane that they did not spill the beans.